This tutorial will cover handling eyelashes in Headshot and we'll focus on three specific areas. First, we'll look at resolving issues arising from the subject's eyelashes on the original source photo. Then, we'll move on to consider the eyelash geometry. And finally, we'll cover issues surrounding blinks. So, the model I'm working on here has had some photo alignment as well as some initial texture work performed as described in previous tutorials. But it still needs further work. And whilst the eyes look okay here when they're open, there's an obvious issue when the eyes are closed. You can see that the eyelashes from the original photo have become part of the texture on the eyelids of the model, and this is a common issue which needs to be resolved. And just how significant this problem is will depend on the photo as well as the subject in terms of the subject's eyelash angle, whether they're wearing makeup, and just how much shadow is present around the eyes from the original lighting. So the problem is hugely variable. Now, if you've watched the previous tutorial on advanced image editing for Headshot, you'll know that you can edit the original photo to delight, as well as to improve areas such as this before making the model. But here, we'll focus on correcting the problem once the model has been generated. In the mask section of the Headshot interface, there's a drop-down for options for the face mask itself, which includes the face boundary, as well as the nose and mouth areas and another for eyelid mask options. These allow you to blend more or less of the original photo texture with the generic base texture, depending on how big the issues are. And you can combine these with eyeshadow versions of the base texture from the skin drop-down above to produce different degrees of shadow if needed. So these eyelid masks, combined with standard as well as eyeshadow versions of the base skin textures, provide a simple procedural way to remove and replace the original eyelash as well as eyeshadow imagery. And the reason why there are so many options is that, as I said before, this issue varies so much depending on the original photo and the subject. And this means that to get the best out of the masking approach, it's well worth exploring the various options to find the combination which works best for the particular model. And even if it appears that none of the combinations is ideal, you can still use the most appropriate combination as a starting point for image editing by applying the mask and skin and then editing the final baked texture from the character's modify material panel. But for this model, I'm reverting to the original minimum eyelid rim masking. And here, I'll edit the headshot photo diffuse map in Photoshop to produce exactly what I'm looking for. And whilst I'm speeding this sequence up, you can see that I'm simply using the cloning stamp to take out the eyelashes and reshape the eyeshadow area. And the technique I'm using here, rather than using the healing brush, is to use the cloning stamp with a degree of randomness in making the clone selections, which makes the skin appear more natural. And when editing the photo diffuse externally, you can update the skin texture back in Headshot each time you save the image to check that your edits are working. So now you can see the obvious difference between the model's right eye and the left, which still has the original eyelash imagery from the photo in place. But with some further external editing and doing the same to the left eye on the texture, the result is that the original eyelash imagery which was causing the problem has now gone and the eyelids appear more correct. And to finish this part on eyelash image removal, whilst precision editing will inevitably provide the best results, do remember that you also have procedural options in terms of eye shadow and eye masking, which can be very effective depending on the original photo, and can also be used to reduce the amount of image editing required. Now that the skin texture has been corrected, let's move on to the model's eyelashes. In this case, I want the eyelashes to appear thicker, as if they have mascara like the original subject's eyelashes, and to do this, I edit the eyelash opacity map from the character's material modify panel. And whilst I could simply increase the contrast and blur the image a little, here I'm using copies of the eyelashes with additional contrast and blur to magnify them more controllably. Of course, you can edit the eyelash opacity map in any way you want to fine tune the texture shape, but let's move on to considering the eyelash shape itself, and by this I mean the geometry. Now, it's important to note that if you're only using the headshot sculpt morph approach rather than the morph sliders, you're only accessing a fraction of the potential of the headshot morphs. There are a lot of morphs available for the eyelashes in the headshot eye eyelash folder, 
and these control everything from scale to angle to various degrees of curve. But before I go on to demonstrate a few of these sliders, looking here at eyelash scale, you can see that as I change the length of the eyelashes, they are producing a very noticeable shadow, and to me, this just doesn't look natural. So to reduce the shadow, I simply go back to the character's Modify Material panel and reduce the eyelash shadow threshold. And going back now to the sliders, there are many ways to change eyelash shape, which, especially if you combine the morphs with editing the opacity map, should mean that you can create virtually any eyelash shape to make it suitable for your particular model. Now, the next update to Headshot will include, along with many new morphs, additional eyelash morphs specifically for correcting issues where the eyelashes become visibly separated from the eyelids. Depending on the eye shape which Headshot produces, as well as the particular morph combination used to work on the model, separation can happen to a greater or lesser extent, and it's often more noticeable when the model blinks. And if you look carefully here, you can see that even after I've reset the morphs, the eyelash on the left appears slightly out of position. So in this case, I use Character Creator's Mesh Edit function to make a couple of tiny adjustments so that the eyelash appears more balanced. For global changes like this, it's straightforward to select the eyelash meshes as elements and apply simple transformations whilst the model's eyes are closed. But of course, you can also edit the eyelash vertices if needed. And just to underline this correction approach, we'll take a more obvious example by scaling the eyelashes up and applying an extreme downwards angle to them. You can see how separated they become from the eyelids. And of course, this is even more noticeable when the model's eyes are closed. So again, I use the same method as before, by going into Edit Mesh and choosing Element Mode, only this time, I select all of the upper eyelid meshes. Here, I simply need to move the meshes up so that they're better aligned just above the upper eyelid rims. And after this simple step, even long, downward-angled eyelashes like this are well positioned for both eye-open and eye-closed animation. Now, to finish off this tutorial, I want to talk about blinks in a bit more detail, as these are notoriously difficult to get right on 3D characters generally. The geometry and morph relationships are complex, and a common issue with character creator and hence headshot model blinks is that, depending on eye shape, particularly the distance between the lower and upper eyelid rims, blinks can be either incomplete or they can go too far. The upper eyelids can also be too far forward or too far back relative to the lower eyelids, and this can be fixed relatively easily by using eye and eyelid depth morphs particularly eye upper depth, to realign the upper eyelids. And to fix the blink extent issue, how far the eyelid goes, you can also use Character Creator's new correct eye blink function, which forces the eyelid rims together. However, please do be aware that this inevitably changes the shape of the upper eyelid when blinking, making it flatter than when using the standard blink morph approach. So another alternative method which experienced character creator and iClone users will be familiar with is to use the muscle panel in 3D Exchange's expression editor to fine tune the blink extent. And whilst this does mean that more care must be taken over the model's original eyelid shape to ensure the blink completes correctly, I'd recommend this approach for more experienced users. I hope that this tutorial has been of interest and thanks for watching.